Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to review the presentation of this uh, capstone project. Uh, my name is Martin de Vries, and I focus this uh, this particular capstone on the road to the US digital dollar, and more particularly when it comes to the problems that might surface from criminal use of uh, CBDCs, um, as I would like to refer to them in this uh, particular presentation, and reviewing how the accelerating adoption of digital currencies um, will allow governments to be able to mitigate the potential criminal use in the near time future. Um, just to set the scene, um, it, it's fairly obvious, but criminal use of any currency worldwide has provided governments, regulators and prosecutors with challenges for many centuries already. Um, there's large sums of under the radar money and money laundering, drug trafficking and financial crime, both in fiat and cryptos these days. And I will review the current situation for those two in the course of this presentation. Um, I'll be introducing the compliance by design aspects for um, the uh, digital currencies, such as digitized euros, digitized US dollars, etc. More from a strategic global point of view, to see and to what extent who uh, using what particular tools could mitigate the risks I've addressed before. This will also include a plan of approach uh, to see what stakeholders can use their mandate to ensure the long-term compliance to um, uh, regulatory requirements uh, in order to address and limiting criminal use. Um, the scope of this capstone project is relates to fiat, obviously, but uh, and cryptocurrencies alike, but is exclusively focused on central bank digital currencies, as I refer them to. Um, I'm not going to explain to you uh, and your knowledge um, to see what the CBDCs are. I uh, obviously predict, having gone through the course at Harvard FinTech, that you are fairly well aware of what the ramifications and outline of those products are. Um, obviously, I uh, apply a, a, a globalized strategic approach um, and obviously not a one-size-fits-all approach would apply and would benefit all central bank digital currencies. But uh, the key ingredients will show strong similarities on a global level and that's what I want to focus on addressing this problem. Um, the current status of digital uh digital currencies from december onwards i think the graph speaks uh, speaks rather for itself the yellow color sorry the pink color relates to launched activities which are only a few these days only nine but the pilot and in development countries which uh, are addressed in this um, this particular image are well under development i'll address the uh, the trends when it comes to the development in the next slide. I think more particularly, it's good to know that about 90% of gross domestic product uh, product on a global scale is addressed by the programs which are part of this uh, illustration and therefore covering a large uh, component of the global economy. Um, the trends, as you can see them, are more particularly when developing from April in the top, June in the middle, and December 2021 at the bottom, slow show a strong increase of launched products, as I said, the pink color, uh, and obviously also the total number of countries, 74, 83, and 90, only over a eight-month period, strongly increasing. The key problem that I'm trying to address in this in this presentation is how the growing adoption of digital currencies, um, to what extent governments will be able to mitigate potential criminal use. Um, as said, uh, we will also be addressing certain sub-questions such as the current flaws in fiat and crypto designs, the key learnings from fiat and crypto use, and also how these learnings can be addressed in CBDC design. You might wonder why is this problem relevant now? Well, I think the, the trend on the previous slide is a strong indicator of that. The, the digital currencies are potentially perceived as an alternative, an upcoming alternative for unregulated cryptocurrencies and fiat. Um, current cryptos, uh, unfortunately, do contain certain imminent flaws due to their unbacked, decentralized and unregulated nature. 
but also the CBDCs have a potential for payment optimization on a global scale. What we do see is that current cryptos are primarily used for investment related purposes and the payment structure underlying, even though it is fairly fluent and improving rap rapidly, is not the key component of what uh, cryptocurrencies are currently used for. The growing activity in uh, digital currency development uh, allows for a plan of action uh, for compliance or regulatory components now, so to say. So it, this is not something that we should look at at three or five years from now, but I have full confidence that this will be addressed by those involved in the course of their development and designs. Some facts on criminal use of fiat. I think this slide will not uh, will not uh, take too much time, um, but it is estimated that about two to five percent of global domestic product um, is is currently connected to money laundering and illicit activities. So a huge, uh, a substantial amount of of value is actually applied to criminal use, so to say. Um, particularly high denominations in, in value, for instance, the 500 euro note are, are, are used for that. And they are not very common in, in, in general um, uh, cash related activities, but particularly used for criminal use. And therefore certain restrictions to that apply. Um, this is obviously the traditional modus operandi. Um, the what you see is what you get. Money in hand is, is definitely still preferred over the digitized value. Um, and with US dollars and euros, but also other currencies uh, being accepted on a worldwide level, you know, the, the, the fluency of, of values on a global scale is, is, is fairly substantial. I think if you then look at the uh, adoption of, of cryptocurrencies by criminals, um, what we do see is that uh, this, this is increasing and, 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 and the uptake of the medium is accelerating. But if you then actually look at the numbers about uh, the research, it does indicate that on average, a value of 0.34% of transactions relates to criminal use. Um, there is some improved regulations, particularly in, in, in certain countries or, or regions such as Europe, uh, and there is a law enforcement response. We've, we've seen some recent uh, developments on that end where obviously the blockchain facilities where the data cannot be amended and therefore an audit trail is available to review and to see to what extent uh, certain transactions or values have been applied in the criminal area, uh, may be um, derived and corrected uh, at a later stage. The key drivers, obviously, it's still the anonymity. I will come to that at a later stage. The third party involvement is not low or uh, not available. And there is unrivaled accessibility and speed, obviously, with mobile first solutions. And it's it's all in an online area, obviously, from anywhere in the world, uh, crypto related uh, transactions or values may be stored and, uh, and handled. Um, and again, as said, it's globally accepted. I think uh, the trend is actually going downwards a bit. You see the data on this, but obviously this is still a momentum snapshot. And I think it's very valuable to not just look at the photo from year to year, but to look at the video and see how crypto development and criminal use are developing. So actually the 2020 values were a bit lower from 2019, but obviously I don't think that is necessarily the trend for the coming years. Um, for those uh, interested, I found this uh, particular, uh, I did find it fairly uh, intriguing to uh, read more about the differences between crypto and digital currency. And in case you wonder about the, about the same question, have a look at the uh, left side of the sheet, please. But I think if you look at what the central bank uh, digital currencies can be considered for, is that in, as part of the proposal, a part of the solution that I'm trying to aim at is, uh, is focused on basically cherishing the strengths of the blockchain, cherishing whatever is a positive side of, of cryptocurrencies, because the unrivaled accessibility, the speed of transactions, the storage cap capabilities, the scalability, and on a broader perspective, is definitely one of the stronger uh, features of a mostly, mostly the recently um, launched cryptocurrencies. And it obviously the global acceptance level is definitely something that should be strict cherished the weaknesses the weaker ends come to um, the anonymity which um, uh, from the crypto perspective can definitely be addressed in a central bank um, digital currency point of view so what i'm focusing on on the right column in the, in the graph is the 
CBDC compliance toolbox, as I like to call it, um, and that is to ensure that regulated banks are the appointed gateway for participants in uh, digital currency products. A wallet setup uh, requires a, pre a predefined set of know your customer and customer due diligence requirements for each participant, whether it's a legal entity, whether it's end consumers alike. Um, and they will all have to be carrying a unique ID, a hash-based unique ID to be part of this, this uh, digital currency ecosystem to break through the non-acquaintance uh, non between uh, senders and recipients of digitized value, uh, each transaction should carry a unique reference relatable to the unique ID, as mentioned before, of each wallet and therefore uh, each person or business involved. Uh, we obviously have the digitized skills and the blockchain could be an enabler to ensure that the administrative components as part of uh, payment structures would facilitate such requirements. Uh, the no third, no third party involvement is definitely something that uh, is worth addressing when you look at the compliance related toolbox also. Banks and central banks should be gaining access to blockchain related data for regulatory purposes when it comes to uh, central bank digital currencies alike. I will address that in a bit more detail in the next slide. So breaking the anonymity, force acquaintance, and also require third-party involvement are definitely the com key components of the CBDC compliance toolbox. And I think most of the contents has been addressed in, uh, in, the, in the earlier slides. Um, on how to implement this, uh, you know, obviously we can define a tool toolbox and see, all right, uh, that, that, that contains some, some excellent or great uh, features, but, but who is now to then um, not only adopt the model, but also to ensure that regulators are facilitated in equalized definitions of the compliance framework. Um, you know, obviously with very tight CBDC requirements in the US and very low in Europe, there could actually be some fluency between those two because obviously criminal use might find its way to uh, lower regulatory standards, so to say. So I think on a global level, we should definitely uh, keep in mind that the key economies in Asia and Europe uh, and the US uh, and, and many areas of the world should synchronize their points of view. And I think most particularly the UN-backed uh, IMF is a crucial entity when it comes to such uh, appointments, so to say. It maintains the stability of the international monetary system and it is already closely aligned with central banks already. Um, I think the control mechanisms over the blockchain features that are, a lot, uh, that are to be added to the CBDC protocols on a global level. So when drafting the blockchain based, the technical based, uh, te technically based um, features in, um, in uh, CBDCs, um, these components should be addressed in the design phase. Um, also, I think the, um, the uh, banking structure does allow for the application of, this, of the gateway position. Um, uh, as addressed before, customers are full, uh, sorry, banks are uh, fully acquainted to the components that we are addressing in the previous slides. When it comes to order trailing, when it comes to know your customer uh, definitions, etc. And it might actually facilitate banks with a new role because obviously their role has changed in, in, in payments, in, in, in peer to peer banking um, when it comes to uh, allowing CBDCs to be adopted on a global level. The characteristics of the banks might change, but it might be a new component of their identity um, all throughout. Um, I think if you look at the cost benefit approach, um, it, it was obviously very hard to determine what value could be created and what cost uh, was, in, was related to such activities. I think the benefits have already been well addressed in the, in the previous uh, statements. Um, and with currency being all about trust, I think uh, no investment is, um, is enough to ensure that the, that the level of trust required is, um, uh, is um, is well covered for. I think if you already look at the cost, I was 
fairly surprised, shocked maybe even, that in the EU about 130 euros, which is about 150 US dollars, um, is spent on an, uh, on, on an annual basis per mature resident, um, um, uh, spent on distributing uh, security, printing, uh, uh, fiat uh, alike. So if you look at the investments that are currently being made without you and me actually being aware of that, uh, I was fairly shocked that incredible amounts of money are being spent on the security of most particularly fiat. And if you then look at what an, 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 an over the thumb uh, estimate would be for uh, for the amounts of money or investments that need to be made to apply a compliance framework, even on a global level, five to 10 billion uh, euros would be uh, the, the investment to make. But to, in order to uh, ensure the adoption by banks, the blockchain development and the process to redesign, it's an incredible amount of money, obviously, but if you relate it to the money that is actually being spent already on security, most particularly for fiat, I think it's a, it's a uh, uh, well thought through investment to make on the global level. My conclusions um, summarize as follows. The design phase considerables uh, provides a considerable window of opportunity to address the compliance threats I've indicated before. And blockchain facilitates uh, the adoption of the features uh, when it comes to an anonymity, acquaintance and third party involvement. If you look at who is to execute, the IMF can definitely be considered to be the entity that is to take charge, so to say, addressing uh, regulators and central banks on a global level. Um, and also the cost-benefit ratio, even, albeit uh, a bit hard to determine and justify, um, I think if you look at the current costs of, of uh, most particularly the fiat uh, investments, uh, investing in security for CBDCs um, is a no-brainer, I must almost say. So I just, in conclusion, want to thank you for um, for your uh, time and in uh, and your activities as a, as a student participating in the in this year's group in the fintech uh, cycle. I really had a great time uh, spending time with you online, just elaborating on on your views and your analysis. Um, I've shared my uh, my reference material that I've uh, been able to review uh, in order to prepare for this capstone project. And more particularly, I want to wish you a very good and positive day and uh, look forward to meeting you all online. Thank you. Bye-bye.